Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Running Shorts podcast by Accelerate. Um, we're at another new location today. Do you know what it feels like? There's people that go around every football ground. I feel like we're going around every manufacturer, every supplier, every brand. And this is step two of that tour. Step three almost. 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 So yeah, so where else can we go? Where'd you fancy? I think we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves though. I don't know, Scott's headquarters is um, <laughs> quite an entertaining area, I think, somewhere in Switzerland, if I remember correctly. That could be a good one. Yeah, yeah, that could be good. But back to today. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, dreaming again. We're here with Andy from Ron Hill. So sure, Andy absolutely. is our rep and you've worked with Ron Hill for quite a while now. Yeah, it's coming, uh, what year are we in? 2023, so it'll be coming to five years this December, which has flown by. I can remember when he first walked in. <laughs> We'll leave it there. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit unfair, wasn't it? I actually just remember the hospitality because I seen we sat in the in the middle and the chat sofas used to be in the middle. Oh, pre-COVID a, days. Yeah, we had a we had a cup of I had a cup of tea. We had a chat. It was nice. Yeah. A bit like today. Yeah. Sums up a lot. Yeah, not quite the sofa. Wasn't it? But no, true, true. But yeah. Um, so yeah, kind of a bit about you. You were yeah. a runner. Um, and then I was so I was more of a competitive runner back in the day. I'm now more of just a uh, at the minute trying to lose weight and enjoy running. At the minute, that's where I'm at. I'm trying to fit everything in, like with work and everything. But we're getting there, slowly getting there. I did enter a race at the end of this month, but now I'm working at Loch Ness Marathon. So um, yeah, I'm going up to up to there with uh, one of our other reps at the end of this month. Uh, so not racing now? No, unfortunately not. But that's planned or not I don't know but uh, no uh, so I will me and my friend who lives near me we're gonna pick a race and uh, start training for it so yeah um, but yeah I used to I've, I've run since the age of nine yeah nine we used to run Stockport Harriers obviously we're in Hyde not unfortunate sorry for you guys not Switzerland we're in Hyde and uh, same same really yeah, yeah. same well I was gonna say same weather conditions but today it's blustery and wind and um, rainy mm. which is usually the case for us here um, so yeah, so I went down to Stockport Harrods, which is my local club. My dad and my uncle have been members of there for God knows how long. Um, I actually started running and then actually fell out of love with it because I was a nine-year-old and wanted to come play football or other sports. So played football for a bit, went to cricket after football, and then the pathway in cricket just stopped when you got to a certain age. At that, at that time, it might have changed now. So I went back down to the club again and started training my dad's group. Um, and then went into the group that I basically was in there, in that group uh, with a coach and stuff called Dave Turnbull from the age of 13 until I properly stopped competing like till about 27, 28. Um, so yeah, he, he was my coach down there and... He has a reputation, doesn't he? He has, That's yeah, he's a very, very good coach, um, very good person as well, which is more, most more important and uh, we had a really good group at the time uh, down at Stockport all. I um, always used to remember we used to do the session during the winter, like 16 four hundreds or 45 seconds, and there was eight of us, and you'd literally only take two reps. So it was great. It was like a train going around the track. We used to, I used to love it. So, yeah, so then, um, that, sorry, I went off on tangent on my running, but yeah, ran, mainly did, mainly enjoyed doing cross country more than anything. Um, I just loved the purity of cross country. It wasn't about time. It wasn't about carbon shoes or anything like that. It was a pair of spikes. The, you, we ran on the course, whether it be muddy or whether it be dry. Um, Can you imagine cross country in a pair of carbon shoes? It'd be hilarious! Especially after a ton of rain. <laughs> um, so yeah, so cross country is my favourite. And then some of the road races, like the team road race, like the Northern Road Relays or the National Road Relays, I used to love those. Um, track was something I did that if I ran well I enjoyed, but if I didn't, I didn't enjoy, uh, believe it or not. Uh, and then road, did a couple of road marathons and then as I've kind of stopped competing, I've done a few mountain marathons. Um, so I've ran the Jungfrau Marathon twice in Switzerland. Um, went for a third time, but unfortunately food poisoning uh, stopped me from completing that. Um, and I haven't gone this year, but we're going to go again another year and do, do Jungfrau Marathon. So, if anyone wants to do a, a hard, a ve- one of the hardest races I've ever done, uphill marathon, then Young Frau's the one to go for. Yeah, uh, Julian's talked know. about it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> cool yeah. race to do. Oh, it's like incredible. Just... Like the views, you never get bored of the views. And just the going through certain towns like uh, Lauterbrunnen or Wengen, the crowds are just incredible. Like you do, you get that spine chilling. Yeah. The European like oh. mountain races are completely different ball game. Like absolutely the UK. incredible. And just so well organised as well. Like you know, right down to the end degree. Like your bag gets 
taken all to the top of the hill and there's drinks, yeah, there's a pasta party day with There's your incentive to get to the finish, I've got to get to my bag. <laughs> well, I, fin- I dropped out 25k and thought, I've got to get to the top to get my bag. Luckily, it's the train that goes up, so I managed to get on that. I didn't fancy walking up to the yeah, That's middle. a long way to I know, go. yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that's mainly my, my running career, uh, if, you want, if you want to call it a running career. Or, um, and then, in terms of working for Ron Hill, the brand, this is actually my second time here. Mm-hmm. And it goes, we have to go all the way back to about 2006. I think i just finished college. I was the type that I was done with learning. I didn't want to go to university. I'd, I'd had enough. I was, was and, that? yeah, I just, I just had enough. And um, I wanted to learn on the job as well. So luckily, um, one of the guys down at the track, who I think you might know, Dean Loxham. I don't know if you ever used to know. He used to, he used to work for Hilly. Um, and he did take on a bit of the sales area at one point. Uh, Very early Hilly days. Time. Yeah, of Hilly, yeah. So, um so in 2006, he was the, I can't remember what his actual, you'll, you'll kick me if you listen to this, because I can't remember what his job title was, but he basically ran the, the office day-to-day at, at Hilly, and um, I think it was brand manager. Um, and I, I was working at Sainsbury's part-time, because my auntie used to work at Sainsbury's and I wanted a job, so I started working part-time whilst I was at college. And um, I was missing races because I was working the weekends, uh, and Dean used to go to me. You know, you're missing races. This is not on. You know, we need to we need to sort this out. And the way my college schedule felt, I had a Friday. I was always off on a Friday, and I finished half day on a Wednesday. So I started by working a day and a half in the warehouse um, at Hilly with uh, one of Ron Hill's sons, actually Graham Hill, because the the business then Hilly was still owned by the Ron Hill family, um, and. Yeah, so I basically started working at Hilly part-time and then when I finished college, the plan was for me to take over the warehouse for Hilly because uh, Graham wanted to wanted to move on and go and enjoy some holidays, uh, which I don't blame him. Um, so I started working in Hilly, um, as looking after the whole warehouse uh, operation. And it was only down the road, we, we always say down the road here, but it was literally a mile down the road where the fire station is. So we, we, used, uh, we were based out of there, so very small team. Um, and then... 2009 we were bought out by OSC or Outdoor and Sports Company which is where we are today um, and we all moved over I went into the warehouse which is a couple of miles away from here and then I worked there for six months came back came back over to the office and worked in production buying so bringing all the stock in uh, to send out to retailers like yourself and then I left in 2014 went and did some other things then came back in 2018 as a, as a tech rep and now as a sales rep so Sorry if that's gone a bit a long way around, but it kind of gives you an idea of yeah, my journey with within, the with Yeah, Tom but it's also it's that relevance, the fact that you know the business. Oh, absolutely. You've yeah. done it all. Yeah, and you know, I've, I've, I've been, I've, yeah, like you say, I've done, produ- I've done works in the warehouse. I actually worked in the warehouse during, um, when, during COVID as well, uh, part of it, when we, you, know, you could still have certain people yeah. in, in there. So, um, you know, I worked. Um, I worked in the warehouse. It's something that I've done. Um, I know the warehouse. It's it's a great place to work, and, and the service there is absolutely incredible. That the that the the out you know the output of orders they put in every day is brilliant. And then yeah, I worked in production buying. So I had, do have a good idea of how many facets of the business work. But uh, sales is one that I'm I'm really happy in, and um, I find it a real good challenge as well to work with retailers like yourself to find items within our ranges that suit what you need and I think we're on the right, I think we're, we're, we're moving in that direction uh, next year uh, which would be good um, and yeah I look forward to seeing how, how that goes. Yeah I, we should tell everybody actually that yeah, yeah some as sorry I hope, I hope yeah, no, 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 it's fine. Like, <laughs> it, the spring summer we're taking in a range which looks really cool we're yeah. quite excited about it yeah it's a, it's a bit of a mix of everything from like the new singlets that you've got that are really really nice yeah down to a bit more of your everyday just general shorts that are really well made but kind of that slightly longer cut something you can wear to run in and then generally they're just a nice short yeah absolutely obviously we can't say too much at the minute unfortunately just obviously with yeah, not yeah. season not starting but yeah you know we've got a brand new race series coming out and uh, we're really excited about that and it kind of leads into i think we're going to talk about later about where the brand's going and i think it leads into what we're trying to do with the brand uh, you know from each season now onwards um and i think yeah we're, we're really looking forward to see how it goes um, yeah. especially yeah. In, in accelerate i think from there if we spin back a little bit to who is ron hill for people who don't know what's the brand 
Yeah, of course. Because it's obviously it's a very cool story of where it started and yeah. hailing behind us a little bit to the original stuff. Yeah, you, you just want those shorts, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's be honest. You want to run? You you want to run some silver <laughs> foil shorts? <laughs> yeah, they are. Um, yeah, some of Ron's uh, Ron's creations and uh, yeah, just obviously with Ron, a lot of people may know of his running history and, and I'll go over some of it in a second. But one of the things that he did have was a degree in textile chemistry. Um, and he, he's not long after, so the Ron Hill brand started in 1970, so we are in our 53rd year um, of, of existence, uh, and it started uh, the same year that Ron won the Boston Marathon, um, in a time of 2.10.30, uh, which even now is an incredible time, and you, th and you think the shoes that they were wearing back then, off. you know, there was no, there was no, you know, EV, really nice EVA, there was no carbon plates, <laughs> I don't want to keep going on about carbon, but you know what, you know, it's, it just kind of shows the, the type of athlete that he was, um, so yeah, yeah it was great, <laughs> it was, yeah, <laughs> I really like wearing them, <laughs> Um, but yeah, Ron you know, started the business not long after winning the Boston Marathon and took his degree in uh, textile chemistry uh, and put it into use and, and started to use fabrics um, that were more comfortable and had a better performance for running. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the time then it was, a lot of, it was cotton, which obviously with cotton, you, it's like a sponge. It's a lovely hand feel and it feels to look great on, but it just holds moisture. And at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is whip that moisture away. So. One of the first items, obviously, the string vest from Ron's point of view, and I think it came about when he was, uh, I think it was the Mexico City Olympics when the humidity was really, really high. So he created the string vest to allow air to pass through as much as possible because other fabrics and other vests that were being made at that time just didn't allow that. So Ron went on on his own and, and created the string vest uh, to allow that ventilation to come through. Is that one of those string vests? That is one of those vests with a, you can see the, it is virtually see-through. So it is, it is designed to allow air to pass through and keep him as, as comfortable and as cool as possible. Now, obviously fabrics have moved on now and you don't need for it to be, you know, see-through as, as such, but then that's that's really one of the only ways we could we could get the. Do you know um, what the fabric is? What the fibre is? I'm not actually 100 sure, but I can uh, I can find out for you. Maybe we can uh, yeah add it in at some point. But uh, yeah, no, I can I can find out for you. Probably glitzy nylon. Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine the chafage on that? I mean, a lot time <laughs> revolutionary, but yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so yeah, so Ron started the brand in 1970, and some of the products that I think he's probably best known for was the uh, the Freedom Short, which is the split short, which is uh, what's shown to those that uh, are watching it on on video. Um, the split short. So Ron had a pair of box uh, shorts, felt they were too restrictive um, around uh, up the sides, uh, restricting movement. Um, so basically, took a pair of scissors, cut up the sides, and create the freedom short and now I think every single nearly every single running brand out there yeah. has a form of this type of short. So, you know, Ron Ron really was um the, the start of pioneer. The of pioneer, fun. that's the best word to use. Yeah, pioneer of, of running kit and some of the other things he did, he was uh, he, he was the first to use waterproof or Gore-Tex fabrics in running jackets, first to use 3M refle reflectivity in uh, in running clothing, which is why, you know, we carry on today with the with the after hours product that you see behind me. So it's that kit that you need. You know, we're not too far off now. Um, with it, the clock's going back. Yeah, yeah. And people needing uh, reflective clothing on those dark nights out on the roads, uh, whether it be a country lane or an urban setting. So you know, the after hours is, is kind of carrying on from what Ron started with, with, with using 3M uh, reflectivity in, in products. Um, it's interesting because I kind of look back, and Ron Hill was one of the first almost mainstream brands that came to the fore. I, it feels so long ago now, and it's like we had the fluoro tights, yeah. but tracksters. Well, that's the way, that's you the know, we didn't have to. tights. We were, you know, you'd, you'd either just run in shorts all winter, and when winters were winters, and you'd, you'd just spend all year freezing, yeah. or you'd be out in your football socks, or you're out in your football joggers, what yeah. you'd wear to train to warm up for football in. Or joggers, even. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, could, oh man, if they got wet, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other item that Ron, you know, he, he really, that's what we've been best known for is the Trackster. Yeah. Um, we sold millions of those and we, oh, still, and we still send to I think I had millions of pairs. Because <laughs> it was, that was it. There was yeah. nothing else. 
vaguely like it. And I can remember when we had the first Lycra short tights. Yeah. Amazing colours. They weren't just plain. There was swirly patterns and almost psychedelic. Some yeah, a lot of neon. Yeah, so we got really, some, really got some good. Catalogs in the in the office and uh, yeah, those colours and those designs and those items are, are in there. Need so. a comeback. It's very retro, but I but I don't remember it as almost not dating. No, absolutely, and I think there is a little bit of a, a bit. I think there is there has been or there is a little bit of a, a, a reprieval of some of those items, those neon style items and. Uh, some of the some of the more retro-y um, logos, so you'll have seen on some of our items for Spring Summer 23 and Ultimates 23, we're using some of the old logos on our on our products, uh, and I think you know a lot of brands are starting to do that. It kind of just shows the history of the brand and where it's come from to where it is now. So it's a really nice well of offering a design feature, but also a history of where we've been and where we are now on the product. Do you continue that everything is now still designed in-house? Everything is designed in-house, um, so all Ron, Hill and Hilly are, are, is all designed in-house. Um, obviously Hilly, just for those that don't know, Hilly are the other brand that we have within the business, so um, Ron actually, once Ron had um, finished his involvement in Ron Hill, I always get the year wrong, and I'm sure, I think it was 94 is when Hilly, the sock brand, started uh, in Hyde, and one of the things we wanted to do with Hilly was that um, your most important piece of kit is your footwear. In our minds, the most second most important piece of kit is your sock. Because you can have the best trainers out there in the world, but if you're wearing a cotton sock and your foot doesn't yeah. take that cotton sock, you're not going to have a nice experience yeah. of, that, of, that, of that nice new trainer that you bought. So, so from our point of view, and it's something that we, we're really passionate about, is your second most important piece of kit is a, running, a technical running sock. That's, we see it all the time, don't we, people? Yeah. Got my shoes and then go, ah, oh, getting blisters still. And it's like, yeah, what socks <laughs> yeah. have you got? Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, with Hilly socks, and it's, it's one of those things, you know, some people do get away with cotton socks and they're kind of the envy of most, but a lot of us do need something that's going to wick that moisture away, which is what a, a Hilly sock or a technical running sock does. Uh, but one of the other key features is the flat toe seam. You know, we have a really nice flat toe seam, which can, on certain socks, can take up to five minutes for that sock to be linked together. Um, so it's a really technical way of, of yeah. linking the sock and making sure that the foot is I, comfortable. I bet people don't realise you can get a sock made in 30 seconds or you can get one made in five, six minutes and longer in some cases. Absolutely, and yeah. yeah. From our point of view, we're always looking for that longer made sock because you know the quality's there and the seams are going to be nicely tucked away. Yeah. Well, for those that do go into Accelerate, it'll have a, you know, after listening to this uh, podcast, you know, Hilly's already in there. We've got a good good offering in the shop, so um, there's plenty there to have a look at. And uh, Good socks, it'll yeah. work. Um, so, yeah, so then, um, so that's kind of where the brand started. Um, Ron, as a person, went to three Olympic Games. I don't know if anyone can know what Olympic Games those were, or... Play well, strangely bit. enough, I reckon 1972. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's one. <laughs> If you have, um, I'll tell you, oh God, I'll tell you then. So it was Mexico City, uh, Munich, and what was the other one? Mexico City, Munich. Tokyo. Tokyo, yeah, that was it, yeah. They're the three. Um, and we used, to, we, used to have, we used to have a sunglasses range which kind of named those three sunglasses, uh, named those three Olympic Games. So I went to three Olympic Games. He won the European Marathon Championships in Athens. Uh, he won the Commonwealth Games uh, Marathon Championships in Edinburgh, and the actual uh, on some of the logos, the actual uh, running man with the arm up is taken from the Commonwealth Games win in Edinburgh. <laughs> um, one of the most fascinating things, and one of the most impressive things that I've ever known about Ron was his run streak. Um, he he ran every single day for fifty two years and thirty nine days. Yeah, well, made national news and everything, didn't it? Without they? a single day off, which is just incredible. I mean, the stories of him jumping out of hospital windows just to get miles running. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're not, uh, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not encouraging. We're not that, are we? endorsing that, but yeah, that's just the type of person he was. He was so committed to. To, to, to run in to the cause um, and that's our job now is to carry that on with the clothing and the socks is making sure that we, we provide product that you know um, honours who he, who he was uh, as, a, as a person and, and, and as a runner um, so and, and one thing about Ron is is that you know if you ever ever chatted to him all he wanted to know was about your running and what you know whether you were a new runner whether you were someone who's ran multiple marathons he had such a vested interest in people uh, running because he just loved the sport. I actually um, shared a cup of tea with him 
for about probably about five minutes and the time in the queue up at Keswick 10 miler because oh, wow. he used to go up and do that fairly frequently yeah. and yeah you would you would be more interested in those around him and obviously all the time people were coming out and going hi Ron hi Ron it just was relentless just everybody seemed to know him or if they didn't they knew of him but they knew he they said hi I get a response yeah, just he, one of the friendliest guys around and he was he'd turn up just at that type of club event and have a nice time still run down quick in yeah, the older days flipping heck he could run but yeah he was he was a really good person um and you know his running speaks for itself really and our job now is to carry on that legacy of the person and and, and what he's done uh, in his career whether it be with clothing or with his running performances that's our that's our job now to carry that legacy on. legacy yeah yeah absolutely no it's really good yeah definitely i kind of can remember him right at the races and things but even these just i can remember the 72 olympics uh, watching most of it, so my nan's in Birmingham, so there you go. We could remember watching it with my dad and my grandparents. <laughs> so, yeah, so there, there's, there's a memory. So I wouldn't have been that old, <laughs> but I can remember it. Yeah. Because just also remember, just like, where's that? Yeah. What's going on? Then just hooked at the Olympics. Never, don't try not to miss the athletics at the Olympics. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what do you think now? Like, we've got Diamond League and. Europe, world every t two years, is it? Yeah, well, yeah, we had one, like, one after each other. Yeah, every two years. Going. He's still every, got the Olympics. Every, yeah. And obviously, almost what feels like the demise at the moment of the, the Commonwealth Games, the commies. Yes. Yeah, so which seems a little about, bit... Mm, well, they need, were, yeah, they just say they can't afford to put it on. That's such a shame. Um, so, yeah, I wonder what you think about all of the changes. And I wonder what you think of carbon shoes and... Well, that'd be the fascinating one to see what you thought about them, uh, really, because I think they have really kind of changed the game, really, in terms of uh, road running. Uh, and I know we have them on, I know track athletes are wearing them now, but they have changed changed the game. Yeah. Um, Seems to have stabilised now, which is good. Has, but yeah. 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 But yeah, no, it's just fascinating. It's just, I always find it interesting what, uh, if you like, the older runners would do, think, embrace it try it and go hang on a minute I'll spend too many years in the other stuff this just doesn't feel right which is what I do I put them on and just get that it just feels wrong I mean you get a mix but, don't you you'll get some who will embrace it and others that won't and yeah. horses you know, for that, courses isn't absolutely, it absolutely yeah um, but yeah don't make it wrong don't make it right no absolutely yeah but yeah but it's like you bring it right up to date in terms of athletics I mean the world championships here and the, some of the racing at the weekend at the Diamond League you just, just been phenomenal hasn't it I think was he was he two world records no well, uh, one the uh, woman in the 5k nearly broke the world record yeah, yeah. a and lot of people got close to yeah, that oh, the pole vault was the world record but yeah um, in like the Keely Hodgkinson ran a British, British yeah. record well, there was again. one race wasn't it? how many national area records yeah. well, it was just like all of them wasn't it oh it was the mile was it the men's mile because the men's mile oh, was, was one, one of them I think it was one in 343 which is well Hitchman third Bruges. fastest yeah. time third, time third, is, third fourth fastest yeah, yeah. Well, the yeah. British lad ran well I think one of the British lads ran well yeah, yeah. yes George he did Mills, I think it was um, 347 I think yeah because he'd gone 49 like two weeks yes. ago which is, yeah Oh, yeah. It's great to see, you know. It's great to see, um, obviously being a bit biased, British middle distance running and long distance running. Yeah. Know, so excelling. do you like a world champion? Do you like a world record attempt where you got someone out on their own, or do you prefer a race? I prefer a race. Yeah. Would you? Ah, oh, race. Yeah. Uh, or like at the weekend where they got close, but it was a race. Yeah, I like the race. Saying that, I, did, I was at the sub two hours thing in Vienna a couple of years ago when when he, when when uh, Elliot broke that, and that was yeah, it was amazing to be at because I think it was so different, but. I think for me, seeing a race, I, 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 I kind of long to probably to comes it. from cross country as well, like does, in that purity yeah. of sport and competition as opposed to absolutely. That's why I think that's why I think championships are really. Uh, I think it brings in a lot more people than just the running enthusiasts yeah. because it's a race. Uh, I've always said with the, like the Diamond League that half of them should be races and half should be pace because athletes do need to make qualifying time. So you've got to give them that facility or that option to do that. Uh, as I, was going think, to say, what, I was about to ask, what do you think of the lights? I, I do quite like it. I think um, I, do, I do actually quite, I don't mind the lights. Um, and also I think when you're at a track meet, um, if you watch something like a 10K, if you're not paying attention, you can sometimes lose track of who's leading. And I think the lights also help you from a spectator point, point of view, which 
is what brings people to what makes the sport more attractive is the amount of spectators is that I think having that like and you can just see who's leading and where the fronts of the race are because you're all inevitably in a 10k or mainly a 10k you're going to get some a lot of time isn't it getting yeah. laps as well so um i don't mind i don't mind things like that it's um i like a mixture of, i'm with you I, I think a mixture of the two yeah what do you think harvey i quite like fast times i think you also get that from look at some of the diamond leagues they've turned into races and they're still fast yeah like True. That, that's got, the idea you've got people yeah. placing in 50 55 yeah, yeah. that's be, the idea isn't it yeah. that's the ideal race absolutely but um yeah I, i'd just like to see a mix really i don't think it's done any harm no, 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 not at all. Whatever people's opinion. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you look at Jakob Britson chasing the lights. He seems to do better than when he's racing. And I don't know whether that is a thing or whether it's just what's appeared. Don't know, do you? I think some people are better at racing, and some people are better at just going for fast times. Jakob's in since he's you know he's Olympic champion in the day, so he is a very good racer. Um, but. I think yeah. He, he sometimes he, he might, I think he's one of those athletes that is obviously very you know world class in his own right. But sometimes he's either a very good racer or he's a very good time trialer. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes you know that's when you might get these. That's one like Josh Kerr. You don't take that away from him. He ran he ran that race incredibly, mm -hmm. um, and he's a very good athlete. You know, Olympic bronze medalist. So he's he's very good at racing. Yeah, it's right. For Mike Farah for me was always an exceptional racer. Yeah, yeah. He just knew how to race. Yeah, absolutely. And it is a skill. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Whatever level you're at, it's a skill. Well, some people, like, when we were younger, you know, you get people who were very good at running fast times. When you came to the championship, they, they didn't finish in didn't the top three. Them. So you know, there is definitely a type of runner, I think. Um, some can do it both. Yeah. Some are one or the other, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think if we move on to some products. Yeah, sorry, yeah, that's absolutely. interesting. Though, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely interesting. So, products, Andy. Absolutely, yeah. We've we'll got look. some oh, here behind us. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, go on. You're, we've got some here behind us, but kind of if we cover a little bit of what makes good running kit um, yeah. and a bit of how Ron Hill go about sourcing stuff and how they look after the whole chain. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, within the Ron Hill range, we have two key uh, categories of products. We have the tech range and we have the core range, and we also have the life range as well. Uh, the life range is something that is going to be evolving over the next couple of seasons. Whether it be called the life range, I actually don't know. I only, uh, I'll find out later uh, at, at another date. But the two main areas that we focus on is the tech and the core. And um, so the tech range is where we use our kind of um, you know, our ab you know, absolute best fabric. So we're looking at Gore-Tex, we're looking at uh, Polartec Delta, which we'll, I will talk about a couple of items. Uh, Gore Windstopper, which is a new one we're using for Autumn 23 and a couple of products. Um, so we're really excited to see how that goes. Um, and features like your waterproof jackets uh, and, and items like that. Uh, the core range is where we kind of, um, you know, it's that everyday running kit. Uh, we, we classify it as more of like an introduction to technical running clothing. So, um, it has really good features in fact it's breathable, it's wicking, it offers, you know, depending on the item, it's water resistant, it has a DWR added to it, windproof, etc. Um, but it's for that, it's for maybe that person who's new to running, um, maybe wants to kind of in, um, update their running clothing, uh, but doesn't want to go to the top items uh, initially or, or at any point, or, you know, ever at that point. So uh, the core range is a, a range product that has really good um, kind of performance levels you know i've worn it on multiple runs um but at a really good price point for that for that customer that, that um is looking for that type of item um a couple of things we do at ron hill uh we're, one of the big things um i know we've had conversations about this is, is sustainability um so looking at things you know we we have a numerous amount of products in our range that are either 100 percent recycled or have a percentage recycled in them mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that is being used from um kind of plastic bottles uh that are dried down to uh, melted down to pellets and then used as part of the weaving part of the fabric with the with the, with the polyester so we are one of the key things that we're doing is is using more recycled fabrics within our products 
um, and that's right across the business um, as well. A couple of other things, we've, we've kind of gone from various um, bag suppliers and we've gone to one unique bag supplier for, for the whole of the business. Um, and now we're, we're trying to use smaller bags. So I think you've probably all had it in the past is where you have a massive bag, but the item inside that bag is tiny. Um, so yeah, you know, you know, we're a small pair of shoes in a big uh, box. Uh, absolutely. So you know, we're, something that we've looked at is reducing the size of the bags and looking at folding techniques as well. So folding the item down to a, as, as small as we can get it, to, that enables us to transport that item safely and also that it doesn't get damaged in that um, in that you know traveling over to, from the factory to to us. Um, and also using recycled plastic in our in our bags. So a lot of our bags that you'll get will say is is recyclable and has been used making. So has been used has been made using got there eventually uh, recycled plastic. Um, I know I think in the, in the this season or next season we are looking we are testing at rolling certain items mm -hmm. um, as well. Uh, so we're having a bit of a test at the minute with some of the some of the items. I think according this season um, just to roll them and then see how that is because. A couple of, just for those, just just you know, in case those wonder why you wouldn't do that anyway, we've got to make sure we protect things like logos on the items and, and, and things like that because when they're heat pressed, the heat sometimes the heat is still in the item. If it's bagged, that's when you and something's not pressed against something's pressed against it, it can transfer. So we want to make sure that we make sure the item is made, um, you know, to the, what we expect, but it's also transported and arrives in your store. As you expect to receive it, so there's a, numerous things there. So that isn't that is something that we, I think we're probably touching the the side, not even touching the sides, and it's something that is going to take, you know, season after season to keep improving. But we are committed That's to that cause. Good, good to know that people are thinking about it as well. That's the main the little thing. Yeah. It's, it's little things again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They all start to add up. Yeah, and yeah. like the swing tickets that we use for our products, they're made from recycled card as well. So we're really and you know we're looking at things in the future to reduce the amount of swing tickets we have on items. So it may just be one swing ticket with key information rather than you know three or four tags on one so there's, there's, there's things that we are doing as a brand you just unfortunately it doesn't it takes time to do these things and they come they'll be coming you know something new will be coming through either each season or every two seasons to to kind of um does it feel like there's a, a bit of pressure to make these changes um is it from within or is it consumer driven? I think both really. I think we, you know, we, we've made, um, you know, we, we brought on a sustainability manager, which is as long as I've been in the business over the two times, we've never had. So I think we are, we are keen to make sure that we are seen to, you know, be seen by the consumer that we are looking at these changes, but I think also internally it's something that we want to do. You know, we don't want to be part, we don't want to have multiple loads of waste. It's something that I'm, I'm a big thing of is, I do like I do like doing my recycling at home, and what I would hate is that if it was in a shop and you're getting bags of clothing and all that plastic can be recycled, it feels like a waste. Yeah. So we want to make is. sure that we are we are, you know, doing our playing our part. Um, well, well, you're I, also in a effectively a repurposed building, aren't you? That must go back 19th century. Yeah, I, I'm not sure the exact date, but it is a, it is an old building, and and again we 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 we've, we've actually um, done a lot in this building as well. Yeah, so I, know, I know they're telling me outside that it's not complete. No, you're insulating you. Insulating you new windows, to, yeah. uh, LED lighting, um, and on certain parts of the building, it's motion detected, and so it doesn't stay on all day. Um, so we're, we're, we're but it's all that sort of stuff that I think people forget happening up. In places of work, and that you don't see, oh, but yeah, like especially if the motion detectors don't work, yeah. the lights don't. <laughs> but no, um, but yeah, it, it, it's that, isn't it? It's, it's it's a message that's very difficult to get across, isn't it? Look, we're doing this with an old building. Yeah, we're doing the same. We've got an old building, and yeah. okay, we're renting, but we're working with the landlord to to insulate and improve as we go through it over the years, and we're gradually getting there. Yeah, and it it's kind of important. That we all try and do those things and also it's nice cost saving for the business if you don't have the radiators on as much uh, absolutely yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, yeah we, we, we've, just, we've just got to play our part and you know, and i think you know every small little change that we can make add, adds up to all the other little small changes going on out there as well um so yeah, one of the few brands that comes in i think i'd agree with this actually tells us we don't have to ask you actually say look we're making these steps we're trying to do 
Um, and I think it's like everything else. It's easy for someone to say, yeah, but you're not doing this. But yeah, but the fact is you're doing something and yeah. you're prepared to say, look, we're trying, we're giving it our best and we intend to keep improving that. I mean, that's the best way to be. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Yeah, I think I think you can probably make too many promises um, mm. that, you, you know, so I think from our point of view, we know what we need to do. We know what we're doing. And it's just about continuing that plan to, yeah. to keep improving on that. So... Um, so yeah, that's in, in terms of the clothing. And